address at least uh, to a certain extent. But it also importantly stimulate further research. And we also should bear in mind that research does not always need to end up with a positive result, but it could be a good negative result as well. So uh, research will capture actually a broad area, but four main areas we could uh, see that is conceptualizing of the research project, then uh, working on that or collecting data, then interpretation of that and then disseminating. So actually proposal writing comes between the conceptualization as well as uh, then doing the work in between, because if you have a good research proposal, it is actually smooth sailing. So the protocol of a research would allow to review the published literature and then to plan the project and then to guide it through the investigation. So if you have a very good uh, project proposal, which outlines and uh, gives the direction where the researcher should be heading, I think it is very, very smooth sailing. Now we have to look at why do we have to have a research proposal? Because it is mainly from an operational aspect to identify the problem that is mainly focused in the introduction and then collecting existing knowledge and that already work done in the related area, which will be discussed in the literature review. Then identify the exact area to address that is mainly the objectives. And then the most important part is actually to plan how to conduct the research, which is methodological. But that does not end there. There are other components also that is mainly the administrative parts where you clarify the ethical considerations and then get obtained ethical approval. Then approval from other uh, regulatory bodies like the NMR, Ministry of Health, or even to register in the clinical trials registry. Then the permission to conduct a study. That is, of course, in the local institutions, you may have to get the permission from the authorities. And then the most important part is securing adequate funding. So for all that, your thoughts would be evaluated on this particular project proposal that you have written. So it is very important that your thoughts, how small it is, how big it is, it does not matter. How well it is presented is what is most important. So the basic components, of course, this can vary from different different funders, uh, ethical body, ethic review bodies. But a common thing would be a common uh, set of uh, titles or subtitles would be the title of the project, then the introduction, background, which mainly the literature review, and then objectives, then research design and methods, ethical consideration, dissemination mode, as well as budget and the grant. So if you just, I will just discuss about 10 broad areas where you can start uh, putting your thoughts and then ending up with a research proposal and again, thinking how it is going to be done. So if you get to the, started with the idea, then you turn that idea into a hypothesis, what am I really going to study? Then you have to put those thoughts into pen and then uh, write up this project proposal, then it, you can do it alone, of course, in today's context, as the previous speakers also highlighted, it is very important that you be in a part of a team and do a good teamwork and come up with a good robust pro uh, proposal. Then you can generate the objectives, you can design the methodology and then uh, do the see the significance of this study and uh, then prepare yourself how to uh, run through this project. So if we look at it a little bit of more in detail, you can see that you have to find out why do I have to conduct a research. It may be out of passion, you want to find out an answer. Some people of course do it for a living, but of course in this country, most of them are part and parcel of your uh, postgraduate or undergraduate research de uh, degree uh, completion, a component of your degree to be completed. But on top of that, you can also be a part. The research could be part of your PhD or a M MPhil, which for a research degree. So the central research problem has to be identified and then comprehensive, a comprehensive topic has to be decided. 
because this is one of the most important things that will tell in one or two uh, in one sentence what you are planning to do so it should not be a very long one but 15 to 20 words would be more than enough for a research uh, degree especially uh, topic and it should capture a reasonable ground from the uh, research question or the answer you are trying to find out the population and including also the locality where you're going to uh, do this research or what would what would be the relevant population that it would be then of course how you are going to do this research you should have a mental map about that and have an idea this is how i am going to do this and then to find out what is the significance of my research going to be not only academic but of course it has to be giving some uh, improvement into your own uh, career because especially if you are doing a area for a research degree afterwards you would be a specialized more or less in that so you have to find out an area which also may push you to a uh, higher level in your career after obtaining the degree so that will give you much more uh, freedom to work in future as well as opportunities to work in future so those are some of the important things that you should have in uh, in your head when you are trying to identify the research area so you can brainstorm with your colleagues peers friends in a formal or informal manner then of course you have to critically analyze them and then uh, if the person what I would say is if it is for a research degree or in part of a research uh, component of a other degree program, it's always better the concerned individual takes the lead of the process. And that means that itself is a big learning program in that uh, particular event. And that person will be well read at the end, would be competent in doing certain laboratory procedures and then uh, would be a complete person because sometimes we see that some research degrees of course the researcher would be or the degree holder would be part of a research protocol already driven but i think it should not be the case because that will not give a good opportunity for that particular person to be competent in that particular field so it is very important that you look at the data and then do most of the work yourself and then of course definitely get the help from more experienced senior colleagues of course it you have to be passionate because whatever work we do it is part and parcel of your life it will end up it may be just only part that you are compelled to do because to fulfill the uh, degree requirement but don't leave it like that be passionate about that and of course try to capitalize it on that and make sure that you gain in return uh, by using that knowledge and the important part is that you have to be flexible because later on i can i will tell you how why it is important because sometimes you may not be able to see the bigger picture and with more in, uh, more experienced people you may have to adjust your protocols as well as your ideas so once you have thought this, then you have to put your ideas in how am I going to test that? And I think that was discussed by the previous speakers also. So then uh, put that idea into a testable hypothesis. But of course, you have to make sure that is practically could be operated uh, and then move forward. And sorry, uh, before that, there was one thing I want to highlight also. There are sometimes a little bit of small flaws in the hypothesis, mainly if you don't have proper focus sometimes out of interest out of passion we may go for a very broad wide uh, hypothesis testing but of course at the end of the project or while doing the project we will come across into great difficulties so because of that it is very important that we focus on to a manageable area and then work on that and use of course the experience of the investigators because if you don't have the adequate uh, experience in by the members of the team then of course you may have a little bit of difficulty so you have to bear in all my, those things in mind before you sort of also comes up into the final hypothesis 
then of course after processing these all these things in your mind it is high time to put it on paper it is actually a challenging part so always many of the junior researchers they keep on thinking 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 don't know where to start how to start but of course unless you write something it will be very very difficult so if you can just put your thoughts into a small concept paper one page one a4 page document what you thought how it is good what i'm going to test how am i going to do then of course gradually you can expand on that so that would be the easiest way to start then of course you can break it into pieces where like abstract maybe the introduction methodology again that is also into smaller pieces and then go on like that definitely you should get a help at periodical interval at definite interval periods because that will help you to move forwards in a more productive manner rather than wasting your time and going on a wrong track and then to take a big turn uh, to get into the correct path so always be in touch with your supervisors senior colleagues and try to get yourself uh, tuned or see whether you are in the right direction then of course the background introduction it is not a very large it's about 300 to 400 mm -hmm. words should be the maximum that should give the reader what am i going to do what is the direction or what is the problem that is existing and then based on that problem what am i going to do and then how am i going to find a solution or what is the next step like that you have to give an idea to the reader what is there and what you are going to study so the major issues major problems have to be addressed what you are going to do and how it would be help in the future uh, finding answers to the problem that you have to show to the reader so it would be a briefly an answer the importance of the topic that you have selected the gaps that lies in the literature at the moment and then the purpose of your study in filling those gaps and then the benefit and, and a clear research question that you are going to address so if you concentrate on this and try to write a small area uh, covering these areas in a one to two page document i think you would be able to get a good introduction done and the reader who reads because ultimately what matters is that you have to make the reader interested in reading further your proposal as well as the reader gets a good understanding about the, uh, the, the project you are trying to carry on. So then literature reviews, of course, gives a lot of uh, ground that will give large areas that would cover where what is existing, the issues, then what you are going to do, and what are the gaps like that so you have to anticipate uh, what your research meant to do to base your based on your idea then you have to find out the evidence that has been happening in the past and then the impact of the policies theories and the understanding of the methodologies that have been co continuing and then what would be the future research because articles itself will highlight the gaps that they are anticipating for the future research so you should be able to work on those but my main uh, important message is that you should not most of the time try to confine your literature review for the literature published within the last three to five years maximum because what will happen is your research will take another seven eight months to get published and by that time your research there will be another research coming and once you have started uh, sorry, to start your project itself, because after getting ethical clearance and other uh, coverages, then it will take another, maybe one year, two year, depending on the project uh, uh, type the, to carry out the research. And by the time you publish, it would be a good three to four years from the point you started. So by that time, the research you are doing would be uh, probably outdated even, because there could be other people who are coming in between. So it is important that you take the fairly close research or recent research in order to offer publications to see what it is. And also, you should not be drowning yourself in the uh, sea of publication that is existing today, because through electronic media, we can reach a lot of publications. But you have to select a reasonable number 
and my advice would be actually to begin with one or two good review articles or meta analysis which would have a good summary of existing data and then expand on the further uh, reading based on the outcomes of those and in your so overall in the literature review you should, should see the what is existing and then what are the gaps that had been highlighted and how the benefit what is the benefit that the study is going to do to you to the society as well as the economy and environment and mainly in the literature review should be ultimately ending up with a highlight in the gaps and show where your research is going to uh, contribute to this lack of information or to the uh, further research in this particular topic. So one simple way that you can use it is using the 5C principle where you can cite, you can collect the research available in, for the referencing. And as I told you also, you should not get yourself drowned in the uh, so much of available publications, but select the good credible uh, high impact ones. And then you compare and contrast the outcomes of their critically look at the research because don't think that whatever it is published is the gospel truth. It can be varied even in good reputed journals. It was experience. I think last year we saw how hundred more or more year reputed journals really got into difficult states after being, uh, after publishing some uh, wrong stuff. So like that, you have to make sure that you have to use your own uh, discretion at your own discretion. You have to think, and then of course you have to critically look at those uh, publications, and then you can connect them with your thoughts and see how this is going to work for me for my proposal. So uh, see what the researchers have asked, what their methods, all that through your literature review. Don't be afraid to challenge them, as I told you. Assess what you believe to be missing and then from the previous research and see what you could uh, do uh, to bridge up that gap. So as I said earlier also, and it was highlighted, that is the teamwork is very important because the knowledge has got into micro level today and there is so much of things to know about a single topic and for your research to be as accurate as much as possible. It always better to get help from the experts in that particular field or people who have had at least read more than you in that particular field. Mm -hmm. So it is important that you be build a comprehensive team, not too many people, but of course, competent people, maybe three or four, depending on the breadth of the work that you are planning to do. So have formal informal meetings and uh, in writing the proposal, of course, you can share the components. But as I told you earlier also, if it is a, a student who is trying to do this research as part of their training or degree obtainment, then of course, they should be doing most of the work, but getting help from the relevant stakeholders or the experts. So when you're generating the uh, hypothesis, and then you have the objectives of your study, don't have a large number of objectives. Limit your specific objectives to about three to five. And then again, within that also, it would be nice that you have the first one or two objectives, mainly to descript, provide descriptive information. And then of course, you can use the other uh, objectives in order to show the cause effect or the relationships. And if you just, Follow a smart uh, way would be the uh, specific, be specific, as I said, small specific objectives, not very, very broad ones. And then they should be clearly measurable and they have to be achievable. That is the most important thing. Within the time frame that is allotted to you, within the resources available to you, financial as well as other resources, and then whether it is really relevant and had to be time-based manner. Then comes the most important component. What you have written should be understood by the others because how much nice your project proposal, how much varied it is going to be if the other concerned party, especially when it comes to the funding agencies, if they don't understand, 
and especially those who are going to approve your project to go ahead as part of your uh, research award, research degree awarding component, then of course the reviewer has to understood. And most of the reviewers, not in Sri Lanka even, even in the world are mostly voluntary people. So they have to borrow their some time within their busy schedules and read your proposal and provide the feedback. So it would be good three to five hours are needed in order to provide a good feedback. So then because of that reason, you also have to use mm -hmm. very, write your proposal legibly in good font size with adequate spacing and use always simple language, especially from Sri Lankan point of view, English is our second language. Sometimes we may not, what we do most of the times is that we direct translate the Sinhala or the Tamil into English. So that may not be the correct way. So what sometimes people think that we have to write long sentences, but that is actually deceiving. It is not going to give the correct meaning at the end. So try to make sure that you write small, simple sentences and try to give one point or maximum two points within a sentence and then have a uh, clear expression. Then get the help of the language because always it is important. And then it is important that you elaborate on the abbreviations. You may have a separate section to give the, uh, uh, the, the provide the abbreviation description, but of course it may not work always. So you, it is always better in the text also, at least at the first, at the first appearance to provide the meaning of that abbreviation. And if it has a very smooth logical sequencing, just like almost a novel, which one sequence, one section is leading to the next, then of course it's very easy because the, you should make sure that the reader in one reading understand it without any hesitation rather than the person has to flip the pages several times to get the meaning. So if you are succeeding in one go at the end of the reading, if the person really clearly gets a picture, then of course you are at a good wicket of getting all done cleared. So the materials and methods, it is important from the reviewer's point as well as it is very important from your own researcher's point because that is the key for a successful research conduct. If the method is flawless, if it is moving very uh, smoothly, then of course it is very easy sailing once you are, have started collecting data. So you have to clearly identify the design the population, the sample size, which has already been discussed, and then the limits, the boundaries, whom you are going to include, whom you are going to exclude, and provide a clear definition of the key concepts. Because if you don't provide the definition, sometimes it will be very, very difficult for the evaluator to find out what it is. And you have to give sometimes, sometimes you have to devise certain uh, definitions. Now, one good example I could think of is the International Diabetic Federation definition on metabolic syndrome for children. That is, of course, not quite acceptable. And then, so most of the time, we have been using as them as modified criteria. And do we give what is the modified criteria? And then the reviewers do accept it without any hesitation. So like that, you have to provide the reasons also if you are deviating from the standard. And then uh, propose activity of the instruments. So also make sure that you do more quantitative assessments rather than qualitative assessments, but it also depends on the type of assessment you are going to do. But in biology, in medicine, of course, you can have clear because that would make you more precise in your outcomes. Then one of the most important is the biological significance or the significance of this project. That is from ethical consideration. When you say, it is not only to get the ethical approval, but of course to see how you can be happy about your research. That is what is, whether the research really gives or provides some information uh, to practice or in the future. So whether it is translatable into practice, mm -hmm. then uh, whether it can generate new thinking, because sometimes what happens is, research project may not come up with good statistical outcomes, but of course it will stimulate further research in the future. 
then can you really use your time uh, and uh, resources spent on the project and get a very good outcome without any problem as well as whether it would be beneficial and there is minimum harm that would be happening to the especially in medical law animal research human research or animal research whether the subjects are not subjected to uh, discomfort so all that it is important and sometimes of course depending on the requirements you may have to also alter the project in order to make sure it is really beneficial uh, especially in a resource poor setting like ours and also you have to be ready to revise your proposal because don't think i have worked so many weeks each day 10 15 hours and then also there had been some very bad or uh, that the reviewers had made some adverse comments that you have to always accept because you have to always remember a reviewer sees there is two issues actually the reviewer sees your proposal in a more broader more uh, wider uh, in a wider aspect and that person is much more experienced and you have to make sure to share that experience and then on the other hand it may also say that sometimes you may have not properly clearly written what you intended to write so you should not get disheartened you should not get depressed but you have to move forwards and more it gets uh, more you get comments more refine more more uh, adjustments you make to your proposal then of course that would be a much more robust proposal so don't get frustrated or disappointed and don't be emotional but use that intelligently and try to respond because sometimes you may try to say something but the reviewer may have understood it in different way that's why i said you have to make sure that whatever you write have to be very clearly written and then you have to take it positively as a chance that you have been given to improve on your proposal and i would come consider that it is actually free expert opinion that has been received in the evaluation of your proposal so they can see and take it as a positive and do the amendments and try to attend to that as soon as possible so then of course once you have done that also you have to guide yourself you just imagine for a moment walk through the research proposal and see uh, how it is going to be worked and what other things i have to get prepared like that so if you can just walk one subject or one uh, process through the proposal that itself will help you to find out any shortcomings anything that you have missed in that pro purpose so uh, the penultimate thing is that the most important other thing is referencing when you write it you have to clearly write the references and you as i said earlier also use the most recent relevant references in the, for the research uh, and sometimes you may not be able to get the article directly write uh, read so always you try to write directly explaining your stance and your purpose why you want it and most of the uh, the corresponding authors would be happy to uh, provide you with a complimentary copy and always make sure that you go for the original document because this is a common mistake that people do when they read uh, a document they would come across number 20 references interesting but the information then they will straight away go to the reference and put that reference there straight away without going and reading the number 20 reference so it is important once you read an article you come across a particular cross reference and say for example it's number 20 then you try to download at least try to read the abstract even and see whether you could get that because sometimes when they people quote there may be a little bit of difference in their quoting so if somebody has made one mistake then that mistake keeps on moving so it is very very important that you go to the very original uh, reference or the article and then read and then from that quote it and also make sure that you always rephrase you don't take the same thing and put it there but you have to make sure that you uh, write it you understand it and then you put it in your own words and write it because always the reviewers will be able to pick it up even if it is not going through a software to see uh, comparison or re uh, repetition 
the one you are reading, you can see that there is quite same uh, because all of a sudden you can see the English style changes. So if there is a single document which has the language style changing two, three times, then for sure we know that it has been taken uh, from straight away from that whatever reference and then applied without really understanding or putting it in the uh, individual's words. So it is very important that you don't do that, but you read it, take the idea and put it in your words and write it. And then you can use an easy referencing system if it is a straightforward document, but most of the time there may be some of the funding agencies, some of the ethical uh, review committees will insist on a particular style. Of course, you can use then a referencing software like EndNote or something, which would make your job much more easier. So additional information, so those what I told you were the main information that the research proposal requires from a reviewer's point of view, but of course, for a comprehensive uh, proposal, especially when you're submitting it to uh, originally for, uh, for a grant application or even for a registration for a research degree, then of course you have to have the name of the principal investigator, co-investigator with affiliations, any collaborators, then if there is a funding, organize, funding organization that had been identified, then of course a content page would make it much more easy for the reader. And then summary of the project to begin with, then of course it is much easy, then list of abbreviations. And of course you have to make sure that you adopt a clear numbering system. So section wise you do it, then it is very easy for you to cross refer even within your uh, proposal. And even sometimes certain ethical review committees would ask for information based on the numbering. So if you start begin with the numbering right from the beginning, it is very easy for you. And then you can divide it into sections. So I think uh, you all would have got a certain idea so there is actually not much of technicality here. It is actually that you have to make sure that the reader understands what you uh, try to say. And it is important for you also to have this project proposal written very clearly because then of course it is very smooth sailing during the process of conduct of the research. Thank you. Thank you very much for that comprehensive presentation, sir. There are a few questions. The first question is, when we write the introduction chapter, can we use tables and figures to specify, highlight some facts? Usually it is actually not really advisable because you are trying to introduce the, re the reader into the context of the project proposal or the area what you are going to study. So usually I don't think, uh, it is advisable to put because that means you are trying to make the reader work hard to look into the information. And then there would be a limitless amount of information that the writer would be trying to provide into that. So it is always better because introduction is actually a summary. Then in the literature review, you will be going into much more depth. So in that process, you may, depending on the requirement, you can put it. But of course, what you are trying to uh, message give the message to the reader is what is the real problem here rather than trying the re reader to analyze the problem and identify so you have analyzed it you are presenting it and in a very comprehensive short manner you try to give the information to the reader and by the time the reader has just read it should be able to grasp the problem there's another question if we have to do a systematic review before our study in situations like developing a concept guideline or a program, should we include that step inside our proposal or can we just do it as a separate study and only include it in the thesis? It all depends on how you are designing. It could be a component of the main study. Now, some of the things, especially in other universities and all, you are asked to do a, a systematic review. So it depends on the place. Now, if you have to do the systematic review and then part of that, or you come out of that with a the publication, then of course, based on that, you can drop your uh, 
draw it into the literature review and put it. But of course, if it is part and parcel of the research program, then of course, by that time you should have, it should be incorporated into the main research methodology and part of that rather than it comes into the uh, research. But of course, at the end, when it goes to the discussion of your presenting the report, of course, that will be a different. But in the research proposal, it will not. Thank you very much, sir. And 